back to my channel and welcome to a brand new full feature length writing vlog. It's been so long since I've done one of these. I have been posting like wee snippets, mini writing vlogs to TikTok recently, but it's been so long since I've done a long form thematic writing vlog, so very excited to get into this one. If you're unfamiliar, I have done a series on this channel in the past called Writing Like the Greats, where I pick an author and I try to replicate their daily writing routine for, in the past I've done up to 10 days, but usually about five, five days to a week. Today's master of the craft that I am working with actually over the next four days is going to be Brandon Sanderson. Now the reason I decided to do four days instead of trying to go a bit longer is because I do work a nine to five and I am very busy with my actual job. So obviously following the day-to-day -day routine of a full-time author isn't really going to work out for me when I've got a nine to five that I have to go to Monday to Friday, but I have made some adjustments to my work schedule for the upcoming weekend so that I will be able to fit in this particular writing routine into the rest of my life as it is. And what is the routine you ask? So based on my research, which is just reading a couple of interviews online that Brandon Sanderson has given where he's talked about his particular writing routine, what I can gather based on my research is that Brandon Sanderson will split his day or the active part of his day into three several hour chunks, three blocks. The first is a block from 1 p.m. to 5 p.m., so a four hour block where he just puts his head down and writes. And that is like half of his work day, basically. He just sits and writes for like four hours. Following that, for the five hour block from 5 to 10 p.m., he spends time with his family. So he has dinner with his kids, he watches TV, he hangs out, they play games, whatever it is you do as a fa I don't know what the Sanderson family is doing in their evenings. I'm sure it's normal family stuff. But that is that second block of time that he has spaced out in his day. And then the third block is 10 p.m. to 2 a.m., which is another four hour writing block. And it's basically the second half of his work day. And what he said about this is that he'll either write until 2 a.m. or until he hits about 2,000 words for that block. But generally speaking, these are the hours that he sticks to, these are the hours that he keeps, and so these are the writing and, I guess, work-life balance hours that I am going to be keeping over the course of the upcoming weekend. So I've taken Friday afternoon and Monday afternoon off from my 9 to 5 job so that I'll have time to actually sit and write in the afternoons. And then obviously Saturday and Sunday is the weekend. I don't know if Brandon Sanderson is writing over the weekend, but again, I got a 9 to 5. I have my own schedule, my own routine, my own life that I'm working this into, so we're writing over the weekend. Which is pretty standard for me anyway, I feel like most authors, most people who write but who also have a 9 to 5, you know, you, f you find the time to write where you can and very often it's weekend time. But that's a wee digression. How do I think this is going to go for me, you ask? Well, I do have some predictions as to how I think this routine is gonna go. Obviously, I'll be checking in, I'll be updating you over the course of these four days that I'm trying this experiment, but I do have some predictions. The first is that I'm going to have a hard time hitting word count goals. Generally, what is standard for me and my routine and what I know works best for me, sprint style writing or following like a Pomodoro method type schedule. What I found is that my peak productivity schedule for consistent work is to work for about 30 minutes, roughly 30 minutes, I can get a lot of output done in that 30 minutes, but the second I go over that, I really start to burn out quickly. So I tend to take like a five to 10 minute break, focus on something else, look at something else, do something else for five to 10 minutes, and then I'll come back to work and carry on for another 30 minutes. Following that pattern, I can sustain that for a good several hours at a time. I'm not sure how it's gonna go though if I try to just put my head down and work for four hours straight through without taking a break. I don't know if Brandon Sanderson takes breaks. It's not really something that he has discussed in these interviews, if these four hour chunks are broken up even further. I'm going to assume not. I'm really just um, basing this solely off of the information that is out there on the internet. Since that information is not included, I'm going to assume it's not really relevant. So I am going to try. <laughs> I'm gonna try to keep my head down for four hours at a time and just work and not 
not focus on anything else. Historically, that has proven difficult, but we'll see how it goes. The second concern that I have is that I am not a nighttime person. Not, not even a little bit. I like, do I like a late night every now and then? Sure, I, I love, you know, hanging out with friends, hanging out with my family, going to, you know, a party or whatever it is in the evening. Having a night out every once in a while is great. I love it. For the most part though, I am in bed. I am falling asleep, lights out, trying to fall asleep sometime between 10 p.m. and 11 p.m. And that's really not conducive to this type of daily schedule. It's also really not conducive to my morning person habit. I do try to get up early. I like to start my day relatively quickly. I'm not really like a lie about in the morning. Again, much like a late night, I do enjoy the occasional lion. I like to relax on a Sunday morning, but I also like, I want to just get up. I don't want to rot in bed if that makes sense, throughout the morning. And I I feel like if I start to wake up later in the morning, I'm gonna start feeling anxiety about that. So for that reason, in addition to the whole, you know, I work a nine to five business thing, those are the two primary reasons why I'm only doing this for four days instead of trying to extend it further. But I'm hopeful that this process will help me to reset my brain a little bit. Not even, I don't feel that I need like a full brain reset when it comes to writing at the moment, but it's always good to freshen things up and to try things from a new perspective or in this case from a new hourly routine. So that's what I'll be doing for the next four days. I'm starting Friday. I do have some meetings on Friday morning, so I will be working in the morning and then from Friday afternoon onward I will be fully immersed in this routine, spending my evenings with friends. Family not so much because I don't live with my family. They are currently five hours behind me in a different country. I'm interpreting Brandon Sanderson's family time block as just like, do things for you, do things that feed the soul, do things that aren't writing, that like nurture your relationships with yourself and with others. So that's what I'll be doing in the evenings and trying to stay awake until 2 a.m., which is not normal for me, but we'll see how it goes. And I've rambled long enough, so I'm gonna send you off now to the vlog portion of this video. You leave again between the shades Let the moonlight catch our summer escapades I leave my backpack on your floor And hang my dripping towel from your closet door This is reckless This is so sweet You said this won't matter in just a couple weeks but this is worth it This is pool sides This is warm air I think it's real life You think you love me and you mean it I said, God, that's inconvenient Another night to add to my collection Raise a glass to teenage affection We've never been so young and we won't be for another day I said I think I love you too Should probably watch the things I say It's cold and I start to shiver But we're the best they've seen West of the Mississippi River, 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 River.
it's day two of writing like Brandon Sanderson. I did not check in yesterday because it was day one and I didn't really have a ton to say. And by the time I got to the end of my second writing session in the wee hours of the morning, I was so tired. I just crashed. I don't foresee myself really checking in at the end of the day throughout this process, but it's Saturday morning, so here we are. I did not really do any word tracking yesterday for a couple of reasons. Well, really for one reason, and that is that I had a workshop last night ahead. So I sent my writing group a piece of work about a month ago. They read it, they took notes, they came back to me last night, gave me all of their notes and their feedback and their critique, and now, now I get to implement all of that into the rewrite of this piece of work. What I've been doing in the meantime, because I didn't want to touch it while they were reading it, is I've just been brain dumping. So many ideas that I'm just trying to form like a semblance of a structure with. So I'm brain dumping like crazy. That's what I did yesterday afternoon. So I wasn't really keeping track of word count because you don't you don't really need to do that when you're brain dumping. I wasn't drafting. I was just putting ideas on paper, which is still writing. What do we think today? Thinking hoops or danglies. I've been wearing these a lot lately. I think I might, I think I might switch back to the hoops. Came home at the end of the afternoon session, had some dinner, had my workshop, took my notes, took many notes, and then spent my nighttime session kind of re-outlining, formulating where I need to go with this project, which means that I can kind of dive into rewrites this afternoon. I was so exhausted though. We also, my flatman and I had a friend over last night. We had a couple glasses of wine, which, you know, I think if I had been just cold drafting in my nighttime session, that really would have been a problem. That would not have helped me out. This morning, I'm actually about to head out to go have coffee with my cousin who lives just around the corner. Um, this is not coffee. This is hot water with lemon. And then this afternoon, I will dive into rewrites. I'm feeling very perky this morning, much perkier than I thought I would be after such a late night and also a couple glasses of wine. Usually I'm pretty groggy the morning after such a late night because I let myself sleep until I just woke up naturally. I think that really has benefited me this morning in my, my mood and my cognitive functioning. So I think that's gonna be the move for tomorrow as well, instead of pushing myself to get up super duper early and start my day and just be productive from like 8.30 onwards, I'm just gonna let myself rest in the morning. I don't know, I don't know how this is gonna work on Monday and Tuesday when I have to go back to work in the morning, but you know, we'll, uh, we'll see. I am working from home on Monday, so I might be able to just like take it slow in the morning, you know, work from bed in my pajamas for a little while. Tuesday's gonna be tough. But right now I feel great and I'm gonna go get coffee with my cousin. I might change though. I don't think I'm really feeling this sweater. I'm so tired. I'm so <laughs> tired. It's Sunday morning and I'm gonna tell you right now this is gonna be my last check-in until we wrap this up because I can't. Um, no, I just, I foresee myself being very busy for the rest of today and tomorrow and so I don't foresee myself having a ton of time to check in with you. That's all. But how's it going? It's going. Last time I spoke to you was yesterday morning before I did any of my writing for the day. So I'm gonna tell you how that went. 
it was good. It was actually surprisingly good. I, for my afternoon session, I don't know, maybe it was the like being removed from writing for a couple hours, just going and hanging out with my cousin, having some coffee in me already when I got to my writing session. But for some reason, I was able to just put my head down and plow through for like four hours, which never happens. That's very unusual for me. Typically, I do need to take a break. I do need to go like Pomodoro method. But yeah, yesterday afternoon, I think it, you know what I think it might be? I think it might be that I'm rewriting. Yeah, Friday I got my feedback and then yesterday I just started rewrites. And the thing about my current work in progress that I am, I am re- drafting, I'm doing my second draft of right now, is that I actually started writing it five years ago and so the first like 60 pages have already gone through extensive rewrites just as I come back to it and so they're really good and I'm really happy with most of that. A lot of it did need to get cut but I didn't have to start making any like kind of structural changes, anything major from the like the very top of the book. And so I think that's why I was able to just kind of fly through yesterday afternoon and even last night. I mean, I wrote almost 10k yesterday, but most I mean it's all pulled from my first draft. Like going through it with a fine tooth comb saying what do I need to cut? What do I need to change? Is there anything that needs to be like shifted around a little bit? Like my first scene, I had to change the location of my first scene so that obviously was work. It wasn't just like, oh, copy paste one scene here, here, and oh look, I've written 10,000 words. No. I had to rewrite, I had to change the location of my first scene. So that took a little while, but I'm still like, I'm introducing my main character, I'm introducing some of my side characters in that first scene, and you know, trying to keep the characterization of those characters incorporated. I decided not to focus too much on word count. I was more concerned with narrative and where in the narrative I'm at. And so my goal for my two writing sessions yesterday was to reach a point in my narrative where I was done with most of my like pulling and cutting and uh, to reach a point where I had to start making structural changes. So that's where I'm at now and I do think my word count is going to drop significantly today because it's just it's much bigger changes that need to happen today and tomorrow so uh, I don't think my word count is going to be nearly as high as it was yesterday but that's okay. I am running a little bit late for my day right now though so I am gonna sign off. Oh and then in the evening, that's right, um, in the evening I went rock climbing. My flatmate is not home this weekend, she's at her partner's house. And so while I you know hung out with her and a friend on Friday night, last night it was just me and so I went rock climbing because that feeds my soul. That's something I really enjoy. And I do think that that physical activity in the evening kind of gave me a, a boost a little bit, a little burst of energy to um, to get through my nighttime session. I don't know if you can tell how tired I am. My brain's not... The way I am thinking of words and then trying to get them from my brain to come out my mouth, it's not going well. So I'm gonna sign off. And I'm just gonna go... <laughs> I'm just gonna go right and hopefully... Hopefully words work better coming out of my fingers than out of my mouth. That's where we're at.
We have officially reached the end of my writing like Brandon Sanderson experiment. It is Wednesday morning, obviously didn't check in on Monday, uh, I didn't really expect to. And then yesterday being Tuesday, I was in the office all day, I wasn't working and I was just like so, <laughs> I was shattered all day long, I was so tired from staying up until 1 or 2 a.m. four nights in a row. It, you know, it takes a toll. When that's not your routine, it takes its toll. But I am mostly recovering covered now I do I kind of feel like I might be coming down with something a little bit I don't know if you can hear it in my chest and my throat I'm okay I'm I'm mostly recovered from from this wild um, experiment if you will of, of staying up and working I feel like I almost flipped my hours but I also like I definitely was not pulling like the night shift in terms of like going and having my day be from like 8 a.m. or 8 p.m. to 8 a.m which would be flipped from my normal. All in all, good experience. I think if I had the scheduling freedom of a, a full-time author and I wasn't necessarily beholden to having every single day, every single work day be on somebody else's timeline, then maybe this is something that I could do more regularly, but also just knowing who I am as a person, I don't think that I would want to. I do like to get up and hit the ground running, you know? I don't like to lay about and I don't know how compatible being a morning person and like being out of bed at 7 o'clock in the morning is with staying up and working until 2 a.m. Obviously if you have the hours to carry on sleeping until you've you've gotten enough of it and you've woken up naturally that's fine but even if I did have those hours and that scheduling flexibility and freedom I don't know that I would want to do that. I, I do like to be up and at them first thing in the morning basically. I really like this is totally well semi related I guess but not at all related to writing but I really like you know in the winter when the nights are longer and the days are shorter and it, it the sun rises later. I know a lot of people really hate that and I completely understand why. I kind of like it because I like getting up when it's still dark out and I like being up before the rest of the world and just like having my quiet morning. And it's harder to do that in the summer when the sun rises and wakes everybody up at the same time. I don't know, that's just me. I like my mornings. Anyway, this feels like it's gotten very rambly very quickly. How did the writing go, you ask, for Sunday and Monday? Sunday was the first time in this experiment that I kind of hit that wall of needing to take a break. Typically when I block out a large chunk of time to devote to writing, that actually gets split up into smaller chunks because I need a 5-10 minute break every here and there. I need to focus on something else. I can't just put my head down and go. And while I I was kind of able to do that Friday and Saturday, Sunday was that first moment where I was like, yeah, I need to I need to take breaks. I need to get up, I need to stretch my legs, I need to look at something else, anything else. So I've actually, I've been pulling together a new reading tracker to, to, well, to track my reading throughout the year. So that's what I did on Sunday. I would set a timer every time I reached a point where I was like, I don't know what I'm looking at anymore and I need a break. I would set a timer for five minutes and go just work on like the formulas and the coding for my Excel spreadsheet, which is very exciting for me. I don't know how much y'all want to hear about that, but my plan for Sunday evening was to roast a chicken, which I did. First time I've ever roasted a chicken in my life, but it came out really nice, thank you for asking. Also to call my sister for her birthday, which I also did. She answered the phone and then hung up 30 seconds later because she was getting on a subway and she couldn't talk. And then she said she'd call me back, but she never did. Which is fine, you know, it's her birthday, it's her prerogative, she can do what she wants on her birthday. I, I made my intentions known, I wished her a happy birthday. Why she doesn't want to have a whole three hour conversation with me on her birthday is beyond me, but you know what? I'm not, I'm not one to question other people's behaviors and actions, okay? She's got her own motivations, she's got her own mental happenings going on in her brain that make her not think to call me back. I'm not offended. I'm not at all saddened by this. She's not gonna watch this. <laughs> There's no need for me to be petty or passive aggressive. She's not gonna watch this, it's fine. I'll call her later. Only off chance that she does watch this. <clears throat> Love you. <laughs> In terms of word count and tracking my progress, numerically, I guess. I think I mentioned on Sunday I hit my narrative goal for Saturday. 
which was to just reach a point in my rewrites where I had to start making actual structural changes, which is what I was concerned with more than a set specific word count. So Saturday went well. Sunday was when I had to start like making specific changes to the narrative. And I did some of that and then I reached a point in the narrative where I was like, oh actually I can keep a lot of this. I just need to add a little bit here and there. Do a little bit more early development of some characters. So that was kind of the focus of both Sunday writing sessions. The afternoon session was a lot of cutting and shifting and just like moving things around, not even moving things around, just like restructuring a scene a little bit. And then Sunday night I focused a bit more on additional development and expanding our first impression of certain characters that we are just now meeting. In fact, let me grab my laptop because I also, that was also kind of the focus of Monday as well, is just I'm, I'm at a point now where I'm like, okay, I've set the stage, now I need to develop these characters. I can't just like throw them into the narrative, which is what I had done initially. So I'm gonna grab my laptop and I'm gonna tell you exactly where we're at. 21,664 words. So almost 22K, 21 and a half, just over 21 and a half thousand, which feels really good, but obviously that is drawing so much on my first draft and the first like 60 pages of my first draft, most of what I needed to do was cut. I'm very prone to purple prose and, you know, loquacious descriptions, if you will, um, and I did need to cut down on that. So on Saturday I wrote about 10,000 words and then on Sunday I reached a point of like, oh, now I need to start developing and I need to start adding stuff in and I need to start changing entire scenes. I am still working through the change process on one scene in particular because I love it so much the way it fits structurally, but I need, I need to change how I introduce this character. And so the scene no longer works as it is. And so I need to, that's a big, that's a big structural change that I'm still working on right now. Anyway, that was the mode that I was in for Sunday and Monday. But the fact that I was able to get myself to over 20,000, over 21,000 words from 10,000 in the span of two days, that's a lot of words. That was pretty good. They're not all new words. In fact, comparatively, I'm sure they're, they're, are comparatively few of them are new words, but that's okay too because we're making progress. I think I have rambled quite long enough, but I'm really glad that I did this experiment and I'm really excited to keep working on this second draft. I do have a number of authors on my list, on my roster, on, on deck, if you will, whose writing routines I want to imitate and emulate for future Writing Like the Greats videos, but of course if you have any authors that you want me to try their routine, who have I done? I've done Stephen King, I've done Leigh Bardugo, W.H. Auden. I feel, like there's, I feel like there's one more. I don't remember. But if you've got a favorite author or you want me to try to emulate somebody else's writing routine, let me know down in the comments. I would love to add to my list. These types of videos, obviously, I can't do them super often because, again, I work a nine to five. And so trying to fit in four or five days where I can kind of have that flexibility to, to write on whatever hours I choose, it can be really difficult to find that. So I can't do these videos super regularly, but I do have a list got my lineup and I'm looking forward to the next one. But until then, thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to like this video, subscribe to my channel, and ring the bell to see when I post new ones. And until next time, peace out Brussels sprouts.